Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. Mark Cohen here. We're back on the Vendo 81. We're gonna start doing a little bit of polishing tonight. Everything is pretty well done. Just looking beautiful. It is looking nice. I have started the sand. You can see the transition here. Uh, we're at 1200 right here, 1200 grit. So we've taken it basically from this stage down to 1200. I'll jump up to some 15 and then I'll go to some 3000. The cabinet is looking good. Coin door, selection door. So hang on with us here. I'm gonna grab a few things and we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Tonight, if you've never done any clear coat sanding, if you just cleared your machine, let that thing set a day. Don't be trying to do it on the same day. You're going to have a mess on your hands. But I've got probably three coats on this door. I do that for a simple reason because I know I'm going to be sanding it and buffing it out. So I've started with, with 1200. We'll jump up to 1500. And what we want to try to achieve in the sanding spots is I'm going to level every bit of orange peel. It's probably a little tough to see on camera, but try to get any transition of any orange peel, little dust nibs, which you can see one right here, little dust nibs. I want to make sure those are gone and that's going to be our next step. So not a lot to, as far as anything really technical, I'm using a soft pad and just wrapping that soft pad on there and then starting with that 1200 grit taking this down I always use water when I'm doing my wet sanding you can do this dry I just like the process of water especially on clear coat do short strokes if you get anything in your paper that way you're not making a big old long scratch. We will probably spend an evening, probably three to four hours just on the sanding part. Keep it pretty fairly wet. I'll try to do a section at a time. Once I get that section done, I'll move on. Stay off your lettering, get all the way around it. But to check yourself, like right now wet, it's pretty tough to tell, you know, if you've gotten all the dust nibs, all the orange peel, leveled out. I know a lot of people don't go to this stage, but we'll be finishing with a finished product with our Vengeance series. Be using the three compound systems. You know, I haven't mentioned it much. If you click on that link, anything that I try to show that that you can get, like you can get this Vengeance, you can get our, our Vivid Restore, any of those products. I try to give you a link so you can get to those sites and find those products a little bit easier. I'll try to mention that a little bit more as we go on some things like tonight. We'll, we'll probably definitely be getting into the buffing stage, but yeah, I will spend a good three to four hours probably on each item. We'll go to the cabinet, probably be another, be longer on that. That'll probably be two nights worth of sanding. And then I'll come back in and we'll do the buffing. One thing I like is I got this kind of a squeegee and I'll show you how quick then you can see where you're at as far as getting everything level. Somebody asked me on one of the last videos, have you ever buffed through? Yes, I have. Not a good thing because you're going to be going back in there, re-scuffing everything down and recoding. Once you go through your clear coat, you might be able to try to fix that spot, but typically, if I've ever went through, I'm recoating basically the, the door again or whatever the item I'm doing. So let's dry this off. Once you rake that water off, you're gonna see it's starting to dry really quick. And just take your rag and then kind of finish it off. This will give you pretty well what your surface is gonna look like. It's gonna be dull right now before the buff out. I'm going to show you a spot here that I can already see that needs some attention. When I did my 68 Mustang, I think I had 
it was like four nights so a good 12 hours just sanding and buffing on just the hood piece on my 68 at some point in time my son's been challenging me to pull up some of the videos and pictures when we when i did the restore on that mustang that might happen but right now i'm so busy i don't think that's going to happen very quickly but i've got some pretty good pictures not a lot of video footage but some pictures of what we did to the restoration on that car and we may slip that in somewhere down the road so give you a shot here what i see that i i want to fix here once that haze is off right quick there it goes so and you can usually feel and you got a spot that's missing so i've got a dust nib right there that i want to finish and i want to finish that so everything else looks great it's maybe a little spot right there but everything else looks really good and you're going boy those really stick out well i tell you what once you sand those they're, they look they look like they're you can't hardly even feel them right now that's just how close i am to finishing this off so i'm not too worried about buffing through the clear at this point usually if you're buffing you don't go through unless you get off on one of these edges stay off those edges you get those edges that's what gets you in trouble do those by hand if you're never buffed before use your hand to buff these edges out but obviously i'll be coming back with some 1500 and some 3000 when i get to the final sanding stage so keep that wet we'll come on up through this midsection this will be our our second stage of the door always be careful around your lettering don't get on your lettering I, I did use the Martin Senior Clear on this project, FC720, great product. It's an overall clear. I did shoot it with a 1.3 tip in my PPS uh, 3M gun, which they don't promote you shooting clear with it, but it works really good. I probably had the best results to shoot the clear with the 1.2. I just think it breaks up the clear a little bit better but I've really had good results with it. I would say if you've got a regular gravity feed gun, which that's typically what I've been using in the past, I've always shot with a 1.3 tip on base coats and clears. I know everybody has a little difference in preference there. Probably get 14 different answers. If you asked every painter out there, you'd probably get a different answer. All right, let's squeegee this one off, see where we're at. Looking pretty good so far though. I used to always just wipe this off and man, the, a squeegee just speeds the time up so much more. That way you can get, to, you kind of see where you're at really quickly. I'll wipe this down on it quick. It's looking pretty good. I mean, for a first, first run sand on that midsection, it did really well. I'll let that haze off a little bit. We'll come back and we'll hit it with the 1500 on this next round. It won't take long. We're just going to get that sand scratch back down to a little bit finer scratch. And then we'll come in and hit it with our 3000 grit on a DA pad. That saves a lot of buffing time to get your sandpaper down to a lower, I should say higher, to a higher grit. 5,000 is very, very fine. You can go to 5,000. 3,000 seems to be about where I've always stopped at. That's looking pretty good. See a couple spots here we're gonna get. We got our tank back from the powder coater today and our shelving, it's all back today. So it's time for us to get the base, the case, excuse me, get the case done. If you get something under your paper and it causes a little bit of a sand scratch, you hope to get it out with all your, your next steps. I like to wipe it down in between each one just to make sure there's nothing getting under the paper. We'll work up into our white here right now. And I don't get too aggressive here. I'm basically just going around the edges. Really come out nice. I will wipe this down and we will flip over to some 1500. 
this particular machine we're doing a complete restoration on. You can back up on videos and see the tear down. And right now, obviously, we're, we just finished clear coating and we're sanding the clear coat now, getting ready to do a buff. But if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We are probably, we'll, we'll see when this one airs, we're approaching a thousand subscribers and you can probably go back on my my first or second or third probably my fifth or sixth and i said i didn't think i'd have you know 10 people watching somebody do a an old coke machine but i definitely have a group out there that is attached to the page and thank you we'll see probably time this one airs we may be past a thousand subscribers so thank you very much hit that share button and share that to some of your people that might be interested we got some pretty good projects coming up we've got obviously this 81 we're getting ready to do a 1930s bicycle hopefully it'll be coming up this summer yes somebody else mentioned we have a merchandise site it's got our our shirts on there now we got some caps we got cups a little bit of everything on that merchandise site all right we're going to switch over to our 1500 paper sean i got that all screwed up we started at 12 or switching to 15. so in case i got that screwed up yes we started at 12 we're at we're working to 15 right now it won't take very long we've got very very few areas that 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 needs to be addressed but uh, we'll start at the bottom again and come back up and then we'll we'll flip over to our da pad and we'll lay a a 3000 grit sand on it to kind of finalize the sanding process so yes 1500 we started at 12. keep it wet on this particular sand we'll just keep going up and then we'll squeegee everything off keep all your strokes still very very short all right we'll shrake that off make sure we didn't miss anything before i go to 3000 grit i want it to be sanded i want every spot everything needs to be for sure covered i don't want any dust nibs no orange peel all right let's wipe that down make sure when you get through that sanding stage wipe everything down real good you want to get all that residue of your clear coat you want to get it off the machine before you hit it with the, your 3000 you want to get everything cleaned up really good but we're ready to do the 3000 it's looking good this the sides i do by hand i try to stay off of those and when i put my clear on those sides i try to make sure it is really super super nice do not let it get to a dry stage if you're putting your clear on you're on your edge because that is going to be one that's going to be tough to buff out if you put it down too dry make sure it's on there really nice usually i'll come back in there and i'll just compound these edges then all right we got our 3000 pad out so you kind of know what i'm talking about 3000 usually comes in a like a foam pad kind of foam i put the, the little intermediate pad in between i like to call it an interface pad uh, but that will give you a little cushion and we're going to start at the bottom we'll work our way to the top make sure you're using your water and you don't want to flood it you just want to do a little bit of a mist give it one more wipe down right quick but this won't take long use doing the 3000 definitely gives you a great finish but it will maybe uh, 10 or 15 minutes you can shoot the whole thing i just kind of wet the whole machine down and try not to flood it just kind of get a little bit of water on there
We'll use our squeegee on it, kind of check ourselves, see if how it's looking. So we started out with 1,200, went to 15, and now we're at 3,000. Right, we're gonna hit it one more time, and then we're gonna move on up. All right, let's squeegee that off and see what we've got. That step does not take very long. I've got a new squeegee that I'll have here, hopefully tomorrow night, a little bit smaller one. This one works great on, especially on the cabinets. All right, let's dry that off and we are ready to start compounding. All right, we're gonna get started on the buffing. We've taken this down to 3,000 grit. I am putting down the Vengeance Heavy Cut number three. This will take out a 1,200 grit sand scratch, which we're way, 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 way beyond that. We're at 3,000 right now. We're gonna be using my DeWalt buffer, using compounding pad through Vengeance. It's a soft pad, Velcro. So if you never used a buffer before, I like the smaller pads that it's Velcro on. Nice and soft, easy to keep clean. RPM around, it says use 12 to 1800. I go a little quicker than that. I'm sitting at 22 right now. We'll see how 22, I may go up or down on that, but we'll get started tonight. We're gonna do a section at a time. And one of the common things people try to do is this becomes kind of hazy, just kind of hazes off, kind of like wax in a car, it kind of dries off real quick. You want to keep it wet. You want to keep it wet so that you're not just buffing it off. You need that product wet so you can work it in into the clear coat and take that finish off smooth. I would say I probably do at least, I'll do at least three passes in each section uh, with each grit. At least three passes. Try to put it down wet like this. Some people put it on their pad. I just like putting it down on the machine, getting it evened out. It doesn't sling as much this way, I don't think. And if you put it on the pad, I feel like there's a little more sling of the product. This product doesn't sling very bad at all though. I, that's why I've kind of stuck with it. It's easy to get out of cracks once you get done. If there's a little crack, you can get it out just by washing the, the product. So we got another coat down. Let's hit it one more time. You'll see the luster starting to come back. You notice when I'm doing these edges, I'm doing it very lightly. That is the danger zone right here. Get yourself in trouble real fast. Try to keep your movement as slow as possible. If this is your first time, take it as slow as possible, but don't let it set in one spot or you will burn through. Go around that lettering. We'll give it one more pass with this compound and then we'll go to the next. If you're seeing any marks right now is the time to get back in there with your uh, 1500 and try to get the same scratches out or if you got a little dust nib, this is the time to do it. We'll wipe this down. Just kind of see where we're at before we put our last coat on. 
I'm looking really good though. Hopefully you can see this on camera. Oh, it looks good. Probably could go to the next step without doing the third one, but I'll do one more around the lettering. It is looking really good. Looking good. We'll hit it one more time. Another wet coat on. Let that pad do the work. Keep it moving. I'm using a DeWalt buffer that does have a dial on it where you can set the speed. I'm sure there's other buffers out there that can do the same same thing. I've always used DeWalt and it's done pretty good for me. We'll wipe that off and uh, we will come back and we'll go to up a little bit and move on up this machine before we switch compound. All right, let's continue to come on up to the midsection of the machine. We're still with our heavy cut. The bottom looks just beautiful. It is glowing like a shiny penny. We'll get this whole midsection now. And what's so amazing, if you look at that bottom, we still got two more compounds to go. And then I'll come back in with the polymer over the top of that. So <laughs> it looks awesome now. It's gonna look crazy good when we get done. Let's get going on that one. Still using our foam pad. All right, we're going to jump from, from our three down to our one. Uh, this thing is so nice right now. We're gonna, we're gonna skip one step tonight. You might be able to pull it off on this particular one. I can see it's just so nice. It's definitely coming along quicker than I've ever seen. Once again, we want it wet. We'll still be on our uh, green pad. Moving along pretty good. This number one in Vengeance is very, very light. Got very little compound in it. Enough to, you can tell, it's just giving it that, that finer finish. Doesn't take long to work, work the system. I'll probably spend an evening on just the door. Probably two evenings when we get to the cabinet. I wanted to get the, at least the door done so you can see my process. I know it's probably a, a boring video for most, but I think it's just something that people need to see the process, how long it takes. It's not fast. Most, probably most painters hate buffing. At least the ones, the painters I know, they don't like buffing. If they can get the clear down pretty nice, that's where they stop. Because they know the buffing is a process to get it to this stage. Uh, it just takes some time. All right, we're going to wipe that down. Once again, if you see a sand scratch, grab you a little water. Grab that 1500 or 2000. Work it really finely. Get that sand scratch out of there. If you got a sand scratch or you got a dust nib, this is the time to get it. While you're still working on something with some compound in it. But wow, it is really nice. It is nice. And we're, we got one more step, our final 
finished step, I like to get all this out compound wiped down before we go to that last step. It's a polymer liquid shine polish. Part numbers, I believe, is a 14016. Probably this bottle, I've done it. I could probably do a, at least a couple of vehicles out of this 16 ounce bottle. So if you're just wanting to clean a vehicle up or a Coke machine or your motorcycle, great product. You'll see the gloss that we've got here. Once I put this on, it's really gonna, it's really gonna jump out there. It's gonna be very nice. But get this all wiped down real good. And I'll show you here, we're gonna switch pads. We'll be going to a red pad, still vengeance, but wow. It looks amazing. This is what you work for. It is a process. Take baby steps at a time if you're trying to learn, but it can be done. All right, we're gonna put our, our Vengeance Liquid Shine down and we'll switch over to our new, uh, new buffer pad. You can use a sock, you wanna apply this. I'm using just a, a white cloth and shake this product up real good. And we'll probably do, I usually do two coats. I'll put one on, buff it off, come back in, do it again, and it'll be good to go. This gives it a protective coating. If you got a machine at the house, a great product just to, just to clean one up. It has a little bit of a cleaning agent in it. This product here, I've used for a long time. And it, when you get it on, if it's on a hood of a car, your towel literally just slides right off. It really gives it a slick surface. So let's get a little work going on this and see how the finished product's gonna look here. So it's using the, the red pad, it's a little softer than the green. The green is for, is for all your compounding stages. They've got probably, if you get on their website, inventions, you will see they've got probably four or five different pads. I've got two or three that I use. I really like this particular one for the finished product. But as you see, hardly anything getting thrown off, it just comes off beautiful. Alright, we're going to give it one more coat. I'll do a real light coat on this one. I still have my Vendo 39 with the paint that I put on it in 95 and it looks just as good as the day I painted it. Obviously it's indoors. I keep some products on it that keep it nice, but if you use good stuff, it's going to last a long time. All right, last buff and then we'll wipe it down. that down man unbelievable it looks really good we probably got three hours of buff time on this right now somewhere around there maybe two and a half but it does take a process but I mean it's just crazy but what a little bit of time will transform a clear coat job into a piece of glass basically We'll stand this up so you can get a little better review of it. Get a look at the, really a little bit of close and some detail here. But boy, it feels great. Feels good. So I'm happy with where we're at right there. We will move on to the, to the case and the coin door and the selection door. But thanks for viewing. And we will move on to the next piece tomorrow night. But man, it really feels did a great job so hey thanks for viewing hit that subscribe button if you haven't got it on our our team yet jump on board and each time we come out with something you'll be notified but uh, hey we appreciate it and we're gonna catch you on the next one